When you are studying vector, norms is a very important topic to learn about. Good understanding on norms enables you to understand the logic going behind a machine learning model, especially when you are trying to create a generalized model. Norms is also a very common and important topic for a machine learning or data science interview. And by the end of this lecture, you will have a complete understanding on vector norms. So let's start by the definition itself, which says norms are functions that quantify a vector magnitude. Now, what does this mean? Consider the example of this vector x over here, which has two elements. In the previous lecture, we have seen that how a vector represents a point in a two dimensional space. So this vector right here is actually representing this space within this two dimensional area. However, this is not the only way to represent a vector. A vector can also be represented by its magnitude. The example that you can see on the right hand side, here we are representing the same vector but this time with the help of its magnitude which is denoted by this arrow right here on this point. And when we are talking about representing a vector by its magnitude, this is when the concept of norm comes into the picture. So let's start the topic with the most common norm that you will be asked about which is L2 norm. L2 norm is denoted by this. So let's say we have a vector x and if we want to take its L2 norm then this can be denoted like this which looks like a double absolute symbol and then this two at the bottom. L2 norms are so common that you can also represent it without the two mentioning at the bottom. And now let's look at the formula that how the L2 norms are calculated. So in order to calculate the L2 norm what you will do you will take the square of each and every element inside that vector and then after squaring all the elements you will take the summation for all of them which simply means you will add all the squared elements. Let's try to understand this with this example of the vector x which has two elements 4 and 2. So in the first step we are taking the square for each of them and if we sum them up we will get square root 20 which is the L2 norm value for this vector. Couple of more things to remember about L2 norms which is it simply measures the distance which is also called as Euclidean distance as we can see on the plot. This is the distance calculated by the L2 norm and this distance is also called the Euclidean distance. It is the most common and important norm in the field of machine learning or data science. So if you appear for an interview and if you are being asked a question on norms, most probably it is going to be on L2 norm. And as we have seen right here that L2 norms can also be represented as this symbol. So we don't necessarily have to mention a 2 at the bottom. And since we are now familiar with the L2 norm, it will be very easy for us to understand a unit norm. In very simple words, I can say that unit norm is nothing but a norm with a value of 1. So as you can see, we have a vector over here which has two elements 1 and 1. And the norm for this unit vector will give you a value of 1. And this is how simple it is to understand unit norms. Couple of things more over here that unit norms will always have a value of 1. And also any unit vector will have a unit norm. That is for sure. Although we have covered the most important topic like L2 norm and unit norm, but there are more variety of norms and knowing about them will be a good to have information. So let's start first with this L1 norm. So as per the formula, you do nothing. You take the absolute value for each and every element within a given vector. So it doesn't matter if the element has a positive or negative value. You will take the absolute of it and then you will sum them up as simple as that. Then squared L2 norm is also very simple to understand. It is nothing but you simply calculate the way L2 norms are calculated. But the only difference is that on the right side you will not have the square root the way you have it in the L2 norms. Instead we are moving that square root on the left hand side that becomes this square right here. Next is max norm. And in order to calculate max norm, you will take the absolute value for all the elements. And then among all those elements, you will consider the maximum number. So let's say that you have a vector like this minus 4, then 2, then 3. Then when you are considering the absolute value, you will not consider this minus because all of the values will be positive. And then you will have to consider the maximum value from all the elements which will be 4 in this case. And lastly we have a generalized formula for any kind of norm which is also represented as LP norm. And the formula is something like this. So you can put a value of P on this formula and the value has to be a real number like 1 or 2. And if you are considering the value of P as 1 it will give you the formula for L1 norm. If you put the value of P as 2 
then this will give you the formula for L2 norm. Feel free to try this by yourself and your understanding will be more clear on this. Okay, so we have understood the concept of norms within this lecture, but still one question remains that is where is the application for this topic in the field of machine learning? So if you have ever worked on a machine learning model or even if you have any basic understanding on machine learning, then you must be familiar with the term of L1 and L2 regularization, which is a technique of reducing overfitting in order to create a generalized model. And when you are applying this technique, then the machine learning model is doing nothing but implementing the L1 and L2 norms behind the model training. So initially when I also started working on machine learning, I knew the usage for L1 and L2 regularization. I understood its implementation, but I had no idea that what exactly is going on behind the scene, what exactly is happening behind the training. And after completing the topic of norms, I was able to have a better understanding on. It. So that is it for this lecture. If you found this video helpful, Full, please consider subscribing the channel and dropping a like below and I would suggest that you watch these videos in a sequence the way we are uploading it to the playlist so that you can lay a strong foundation for your mathematical understanding to become good at machine learning. Thank you very much for your time. See you in the next lecture.